All right, Steeler fans, it is Friday. It is time for the Behind Enemy Line segment on the Let's Ride podcast. This isn't just a regular week, though. I mean, this is Ravens week, and, and the Ravens fans call this Steelers week. This means a little bit more. And so I've got the same two guys, Brandon and Josh, from the Cobb podcast on again to talk about this upcoming matchup, which, boy, is a different feel. And I said to Brandon before we went on the air, last time we talked, a lot has changed. So, Brandon, welcome to the show again. Thanks for joining absolutely thanks for having us jeff we love coming on talking raven Steelers. absolutely josh what's up hey jeff happy new year and uh as, as always it's the biggest rivalry Steelers week here in baltimore and uh can't wait to get into it man yeah you're already flashing that stupid pittsburgh towel you got there whatever it is there it is pittsburgh <laughs> sucks towel. i love it i love it but anyways Let's start off with the news that broke on Wednesday, and that was John Harbaugh met with media and said Lamar Jackson is not playing, not dressing. Uh, it's Tyler Huntley, Josh, I think Johnson, or no, is that who it is? Who's the third quarterback? Josh Johnson and then Malik, yeah. and Malik, I think okay. Malik Harrison's the third, the third guy. So Lamar's not playing. I'm assuming that probably anyone that's dinged up is not going to be playing. So I wouldn't expect to see Odell Beckham because, well, his at his age, you don't need to risk anything. Zay Flowers is nursing an injury. Uh, Marlon Humphrey has been banged up, and so has um, uh, your safety, which his name escapes me right now. Uh, but Kyle Harris. Uh, yeah, Hamilton. There we go. So, Brandon, let me ask you this. Is this what you expected from Harbaugh in terms of once you've locked up the number one seed, the division, everything that you could lock up is done. Week 18 is meaningless for the Ravens. Is this what you expected? You know, this is this is what I expected. Absolutely. There is a lot of Ravens fans, I can tell you out there, that are not happy that there are going to be so many starters sitting. But I absolutely 100% expected this. I mean... John Harbaugh has been through this before. We know what happens. Crazy freak injuries happen all the time. And this team is banged up. There are a lot of players like you just listed them. There are a lot of players that are banged up. And if you're giving them this week off, that's pretty much, you know, three weeks off until they have to play again. So yeah. it's it's obviously you don't want to risk injury. And plus, I don't know if you've seen the weather report for Baltimore. Yes. It's going to be a dicey one on Saturday. That is a good point. Josh, do you echo that sentiment, or do you wish some of these players would be playing, even if just for a little bit like in the preseason game? No, I think all these fans are silly. Um, they can have their opinions for sure, and I've seen it already on the uh, socials. But, look, you cannot play them in any way, shape, or form. The PTSD from 19 is hilarious. Um, they need to get over it. Um, it's a different team, different year. Um, I get it, right? Oh, the history and the curse and whatever. Like, you can't. Um, look. I'll point this out right now for the matchup. Mason Rudolph for you guys. Hadn't started in over 700 days. Yeah. What's he doing? The offense has scored 30 points in two straight games. Like, yes. relax, people. It's I, like, I, I just think it's hilarious. But again, you're going to have your opinion just like everybody else. I don't want the bye week. They were going to get it regardless whether you agree or not. And I, as soon as I heard he wasn't starting Lamar, I'm like, good. Don't wrap him in bubble wrap. Put him on the shelf. I think you practice and prepare like it's a game. But you keep these guys out. Look, we went through it two years ago. Uh, J.K. got hurt again for the second time this year. Remember the first game of the season when it counted? I remember when a hell, all hell broke loose when J.K. Dobbins, the first time around, played in a meaningless preseason game against the Washington Commanders, and he tore his knee up then. I believe it was a knee, right? And everybody was up in arms. Why are you playing these guys? Why are you playing these guys? I'm like, sure, if the fans want their way, play all the starters. And then when somebody gets hurt, I don't want to hear any word. You got to sit yeah. him. You got to sit him. It, it, there's no improvement in position. You have to sit him. It makes sense. And the Steelers have a lot to play for. Like the Steelers, if they have any hopes in the playoffs, they have to win this game first. Like that, there is a there is a crazy scenario if they lose, they could still get in. But the best chance is that they win this game. So they're going to be playing as if their their season is on the line because technically it is. And I just keep on thinking. And a lot of fans, Steeler fans, have asked me like, "What do you think about this?" Uh, they're me. I'm like. Do you want your quarterback with TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith bearing down on him at all for a game that really is unnecessary for them? No. So I, I agree with Harbaugh. Believe Look it or what not. happened in the Dolphins game, Jeff. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Mike McDaniel's under fire for leaving Bradley Chubb in the game when the game was, what, 40 points out of hand in like three minutes to yep. go. Um, he's got an answer for that. Like, do you want that to be Harbaugh? Um, you know, when Sunday morning or, Monday, or whatever, Monday morning pressure. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. Oh. We got to enter the playoffs and just confirmed that Lamar Jackson tore his knee. Like, yeah. let, let's just stop. Like, you got, like, Brandon's right. The weather, 
maybe if it's good weather, maybe I can see throwing them out for a series. And that's like a hard maybe, but like, look, you, you got to keep these guys under bubble wrap. I get it. It's the big rivalry. I get it. It's the whole keep you guys out of playoffs, but we've been here before. Even if you want to revert back to 19, RG3 led Ravens beat you guys. So yep. it, it, it can happen. Harbaugh before this year in the teams, they won 23 straight preseason games with second and third stringers. They set that winning precedence, and me and Brandon broke that down. I talked about that's the winning culture they set. So I'm not worried. And look, Tyler Huntley, I'm a believer in him. He can go out there and lead the team. Um, and they're going to put the best foot forward to try to beat the Steelers on, on Saturday night. So um, I'm certainly okay with the news. Um, and, yeah, it's disappointing. You want to see Lamar's – I feel like the, the rap on Lamar, right, Jeff, has been he hasn't played the Steelers. Either he hasn't played them at all or he just loses to him, right? So yeah, it was yes. kind of like – like talk about what it is. I think uh, Tyler Huntley has more starts against the Steelers, and here's another one, right? So yeah. it's for good measure, and we get that with Lamar being hurt and all that. And we want the revenge because I feel like you're right. You think you said the onset of the show, a lot has changed. And believe it or not, the Ravens, since that loss in Pittsburgh, it feels like a year ago, right? They've only lost one football game in a span yeah. of three months since that loss. So with all the drops and with all that inability to offense, I mean, look at them now, Jeff. Like, imagine playing that offense now. I, I think you guys would have another beat down like we just did the Dolphins. So it's kind of like I guess you guys are really okay that we're not playing the starters because uh, – a lot has changed since that October <laughs> October afternoon. <laughs> there, there's a lot of Steeler fans when when Harbaugh obviously made the announcement. I saw it on Twitter and I shared it with the uh, the fans, and they're like, "Up, oh, Steelers are going to lose because well, they they always beat Lamar. Lamar's only beaten us one time, and if he were playing, we we would have won." The Steelers and Ravens when they play, I don't care what had happened leading up to that game, what the records were. It's always a close game. It always is a close game. And in the years that the Steelers were dominant, Ryan Mallett leads them to victory. Like this weird crap happens. And when the, the Ravens are dominant, the Steelers find a way to, to come up with a win. It just always happens. Look at earlier this season, how fluky that game was. The drop passes, the interception at the end of the half to at the end of half instead of, or no, that was actually an incompletion. It was the snap. It was Linderbaum that snapped the ball thinking that they drew him off sides and it ends up no points at halftime. It was just weird. That type of stuff happens. Now, Brandon, I'm going to ask you a question. The Ravens fan base, there's no way, even with backups, they want the Steelers in the playoffs. And it's not that they're scared of the Steelers. It's that they hate the Steelers. There's no way that they want them in the playoffs. There's going to be a, this is going to be a heated game. Would you agree or disagree? Oh, 100 percent. This it, it's Raven Steelers. Doesn't matter. It, these guys could be playing in, in that new UFL uh, league if they wanted to. If it was Ravens versus Steelers, people are going to show up for it and people want to see these two teams. They're old school football. It's yeah. it's an in the trenches game. It, it is hard knocks. And that's exactly why we're not starting most of the players. But, uh, you know, people want to see that this this does mean something. You guys, the Steelers did beat the Ravens earlier this year. The Ravens and the Ravens fan base do not want to get swept because it is Raven Steelers. So they, the Ravens, even though we're saying, oh, there's nothing to play for, they're, they're set, they're the number one seed, it's all good, yada, yada, yada. It's still Raven Steelers. They don't want to get swept. They, they are going to want to win. The inclement weather that you spoke of, uh, depending on where this storm tracks, uh, in Baltimore, they're saying that there could be a couple inches of snow the further west, like where I am in the state of Maryland. We could get where there's any, I've heard anywhere from five to six inches of snow this weekend. So Josh, let me ask you, do you think that if, if I, and historically it would say like the running game is going to be the Ravens, but with this new offense, I kind of asked, so, you know, the Steelers are, are the ones that have a really good, strong running game right now, coming off a 200 plus yard uh, day against the Seattle Seahawks on the road. Who do you think poor inclement weather like this that's expected in Baltimore? Who does that favor in your opinion? Well, if you look at the personnel, I certainly feel like it favors your team, right? The Steelers, um, you know, with Jalen Warren and what Najee Harris can do, and they have something to play for, not to take, you know, credit away from what the Ravens backfield do. And they do boost the NFL leading rushing attack, right? I think it's yes. around 160 yards a game um, still. Um, I was going to take a hit this weekend, but it, it, that's a testament to what the Ravens bread and butter is. Right. And it's kind of AFC North ish. You know, when you think about AFC North teams, you don't think of finesse and passing. You think of ground and pound, you think of defense and ground and pound running game. That's the two things you think of in this division. So, um, you know, to see, you know, you know, Flacco do what, what he's doing in, in Cleveland and then see the, the Steelers putting 30 points, two games in a row and see what Lamar and the Ravens, did with 50 something points and five touchdowns and 300 yards in the air. It's kind of like, 
the anti AFC North, but um, you know, it's, it, we've seen it before you win any way you can and they're winning multiple ways. And yeah. And especially, you know, I'm wearing the angry runs t-shirt, not the, um, uh, the Patrick queen one, but the Gus Edwards one uh, today. And you got, you guys had back-to-back nominees and uh, the yes, last yes. two angry runs on good morning football were Ravens and Steelers back-to-back. So it's a testament. And they had two nominees themselves in that same segment. So, you know, coming off of that, you know, speaking of running and angry runs, uh, pretty awesome. Uh, by the way, that Najee Harris stiff arm was nasty. Like that, that, that was worthy. That wasn't uh, even, that wasn't even his best stiff arm though. You want to see a good <laughs> stiff arm, look up Najee Harris against the Atlanta Falcons last year or against the Raiders two yeah. years ago. Those were way, I mean, he bounced these dudes like a basketball off the ground and it's insane, but he's got five of them. <laughs> you're right. So this lends me to talking about the upcoming game from a gambling perspective. So obviously the line is set knowing that Lamar's not playing a lot of the st- Ravens aren't going to play as well as the weather. So currently, according to DraftKings Sportsbook, the Pittsburgh Steelers are actually giving four points on the road to the Baltimore Ravens with a total of 35 points. So they're not expecting a lot of points scored, even though the Steelers did put up 30 points in respective weeks, the last two weeks with Mason Rudolph, a quarterback who will be starting again on Saturday. So I don't need a specific prediction, but Brandon, I'll start with you. How do you see this game playing out? What, what do you see? Just the vibe of the game. I think the vibe of the game is going to be one. It's going to be dirty. It's going to be like, there's going to be no clean jerseys whatsoever. You're going to see Mm -hmm. a lot of ground and pound. I think, I think both teams are going to be stressing to run the ball as much as possible. I think that Tyler Huntley has shown he does have an arm. He will be able to get, you know, maybe a touchdown or two through the air, but I think mostly this is going to be a ground game. Just trying to keep everybody as healthy as possible. Um, I, I, I'll give a prediction, though, and I will say I do think that the Steelers will come out with a win on this Ooh, one. Uh, I will say that because they do have more to play for. Of course, right. we did say the Ravens have something to play for, but it is not a uh, a a they, they're already secured their playoff spot. So the Steelers, I think, have a little bit more to play for. But um, if you are thinking of of you know touchdown scores or stuff or, or stuff like that, and you're wondering who's going to be playing, I bet you. Nelson Aguilar is going to be a guy to watch in this game. I think they're, they're going to be targeting him a lot, and I think that he's going to be somebody who doesn't get to sit. He's He is going to be in there. He looked really good uh, throughout this entire season, so I can definitely see a guy like Nelson Aguilar getting a lot of uh, a lot of targets this week. Interesting. What about you, Josh? How do you see this game playing out? I see it playing out just any typical Ravens-Steelers game. It's going to be low scoring. You're talking about the, the points there. I'm going to take the under. If I was putting on a sports book, um, yeah, I mean, look, 30 points, two ice in a row. I know the, the, the secondary is going to be out there rolling out the defense. is probably going to be that second unit, right? More or less second slash third unit mm-hmm. um, for the Ravens deploying in the, in the defensive units. Um, no, I, and I, I just see it going with the weather, with the way these teams play. I'm certainly taking under. I see this game very easily being like a 21 to 17 Steelers victory kind of deal. I just, I just see, you know, yeah, of course you want the Ravens to win and, and kind of keep that winning streak going just like they did in 19. Right. And, but, and keep the winning ways, but look, you know, when you're playing the starters, we'll say, I got to go with what my eyes tell me. My eyes tell me you guys are deploying all your starters. It's a playoff game for you. You got to fight. And I think at the end of the day, unfortunately the Ravens get the season sleep on the Ravens, but Look, Ravens are kings of the North, kings of AFC. At that expense, I'm certainly okay with it, even though I hate losing to you guys and I don't want to get swept. And I know the Ravens are going to put their best fight forward. But look, predicting the loss, if the guys end up take, if the Ravens take a victory, hey, get the smile on the end and say we did it. So, uh, you know, but I can't wait to talk about it. I also want to point out as well, because the weather is going to be so bad and because the Ravens are already saying they're going to be sitting a lot of starters, I'm really wondering what the fan base is going to be like in that stadium. I'm kind of curious, is this going to be a half-filled stadium? Are the Steeler fans going to outnumber the Ravens fans? I, I don't know what's going to happen. It, it's going to be a slushy game. Baltimore people are are pretty bad drivers anyway. They don't want to drive in the snow <laughs> downtown. Uh, so I, I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen. But uh, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. It's a Saturday. It's an afternoon game. Uh, but if they're going to call for some ice and slush and that kind of stuff, I bet you a lot of people stay home. Yeah, there's actually some you can get some really good tickets for not a lot of money right now on the open markets. So I'm sure some Steeler fans might be making the trek from Pittsburgh down to Baltimore. 
But uh, so I started this a few weeks ago. If you, I wanted to ask you all if you had any questions for me from the Steelers side of things. I know you're going to repurpose this audio on your feed. So, uh, Josh, you said you had questions. If you got one, go for it. Yeah, no, I certainly got some questions regarding the quarterback position for the Steelers because obviously we know that uh, Kenny Pickett was a full participant on Tuesday in practice mm -hmm. this week. So um, given now that Tomlin has named Mason Rudolph the starter for this last game of the year, um, with Mitch Trubisky still, you know, there as well. What's the outlook for the Steelers as far as quarterbacks concerned? You know, playoffs or not? Like, well, even that. Let's start with there. Like, let's say you do make the playoffs. Obviously, Mason Rudolph, the guy going forward, and even looking into the all season for next year, is is the is the manager on Kenny Pickett being the still starter? Or are they kind of is is because I hear a lot of Steelers fans kind of hemming and hawing about him this year, and I not a that. lot. Or I, I talked to one over the weekend on New Year's, and he was kind of like. He was praising the Ravens a lot and what Lamar's doing this week. When I talked Kenny Pickett, he kind of shrugged his shoulders and he wasn't a fan himself. You know, so uh, what's what's the outlook on quarterback for the Steelers? So if I were to guess, uh, if the Steelers make the playoffs, it all depends on how they do it. So if Mason Rudolph has another strong showing, the Steelers put up points, they move the ball well, he doesn't turn the ball over, then I think Mason Rudolph would actually start a playoff game. Um, however, if it's a little ugly, if he's turning the ball over, he's not looking fluid the way he has the last two weeks, I think they could go back to Kenny Pickett. We'll see. As for the long term, I think that Mitch Trubisky's time in Pittsburgh is up. I think that he'll maybe be retained for the time being until they can find someone else. Maybe that someone else is Mason Rudolph, but once they do, they'll probably cut ties with Mitch. They'll save themselves some cap money there, and uh, they'll probably look to add another veteran. I would love to see them add someone like a Jacoby Brissett if they can't get Mason Rudolph to come back next year. Someone that's capable, but I think whoever they bring in, it's going to be viewed as a not necessarily an open competition. I think that Kenny Pickett will be the leader in the clubhouse, but I don't think that it's a guarantee because of the way he's played this year. So he's he's solid, but that you don't you don't win Super Bowls with solid quarterback play. You need great quarterback play, and so that's what they need from him. So that's that's kind of the the short and long of it, so to speak. So there you go. Very well. What do you got, Brandon? Nothing. No, I think we're good. I think we're nice. good. I love it. I love it. Y'all are pros. All right. So, hey, why don't you all plug where they can, and if anyone wants to tune into your podcast to hear you all talk about the upcoming game, Brandon, why don't you tell them where they can find you? Absolutely. We are the call podcast. We release two shows a week, the red eye review where we review the previous game and then a purple Friday preview. So you can always check them out and we put in some bonus episodes as well. Uh, you can follow me on X at Brando cash. We are also on discord. We have a server there, discord.gg slash the call podcast, join our server. And then you can enjoy some uh, game day chat, some tailgate talk throughout the week, all about the Baltimore Ravens. We're of course, a member of the fans first sports network. I also do a Washington capitals podcast called what oh. the puck that is also <laughs> on the fans first sports network. We're going to be talking about a Pittsburgh loss on that show. Yeah. So maybe we'll be talking about a Pittsburgh loss next week on the purple Friday preview and the red eye review for the call, but we'll see about that next week, but you can subscribe to us on Apple podcasts and Spotify. Both shows are available on both of those uh, platforms. And Josh and I have a favorite overcast as well. We are available on that podcast platform as well. So check out the call, check out what the puck and it's a lot of Pittsburgh talk in these two shows this week. Yeah, so. it is. <laughs> Josh, where can they find you on social media? They can find me on the X, formerly Twitter, at AJ underscore Murr. There you go. Perfect. I love it. Gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time. Absolutely. Enjoy the game, and maybe, just maybe, we'll be talking one more time this uh, this season. We'll see. I don't know. Hey, good luck All to right, you. take it easy, guys. Enjoy it. Talk to you. Thanks, thank you.